I really want them to be successful, I need to have the right team around me. And what we did was really focus on who's on our team. We talked about it endlessly about the talent level that we were looking for. And, and really, that's, that's what I think really uh, upped the ante. This episode brought to you by Restaurant Systems Pro. With excitement, allow me to introduce to you today's guest, CEO of FB Society, Jack Gibbons. My man, Jack, are you feeling unstoppable today? I'm feeling pretty unstoppable, Eric. Yeah, man. You're here because uh, Clay Dover called you out in episode 819, and uh, he had such amazing things to say. He's the CEO of Velvet Taco, and that's kind of how you guys linked up, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, oh, I had known uh, him before, but um, you know we're partners certainly in Velvet Taco today, and yeah. being the co-founder of Velvet Taco, it was uh, it was great to meet Clay and get him on the team. He's the right guy to run that brand. Yeah, so I've been trying to get you on the show for a couple of years now. We're finally making it happen. I couldn't be more excited, and we're gonna dive into your story. But let's get that motivational, inspirational ball rolling with a success quarter mantra. What do you got for us? I mean, the big thing at the mission of um, FB Society is having the courage to create experiences never imagined. So as we think about our restaurants, it's not just to create another, no community needs just another restaurant. They need something that transports people, uh, makes them feel special. It's got nuance and uniqueness, and that's what we wake up every day excited to do. Why does that take courage? Why do you, I mean, I think that's a very intentional word to have the courage to do this. So why is that the word you chose? It's super intentional because it's easy to go into the flow of the masses, and uh, it really takes courage to go against the grain and, and bet on yourself and your team on an idea. Yeah. Um, how do you inspire people to be more courageous in what they're trying to do? I think it's creating the right culture and the right environment. I mean, uh, where I think naturally I'm a risk taker, a bit of a maverick, so I like against the grain. So I'd like to seek out when people think differently and and kind of char- challenge people too. Just don't go with the norm of what everybody else is doing. Um, to yeah. a certain so, degree, what I I'm concerned about our own company is holding people back. Or you know, as you have talented people. You don't have to treat them all the same. And I think that, you know, uh, oh, in the past years, people would put people in a box. And uh, I think when you think about, uh, you know, who's who's delivering um, execution and resources, and I just think that they, um, you know, that, that, that will hold your company back. There's yeah. no question about it. We What we believe in is sharing equity with our executive talent and that's we'll get into that, that, for sure. that that is super important because that. otherwise you know they're they're going to go on to other and, places and it's yeah, funny so because randy is a mentor i i evolved a lot where all of a sudden um you know a lot of the the creativity um that i had prior just used in only in operations i found out that i was much more of an entrepreneur than i realized and um it just uh I needed to be given some canvas to to really have the opportunity to do that. And and he was a perfect partner to help me evolve that way. Yeah, I think it was, um, you know, one of the biggest things um, that that he learned that he passed on to me is hire people smarter than you. Mm. Um, I think that constantly uh, in leadership positions, I I only want to hire people who are are more talented, more experienced, smarter than me, because otherwise you're not going to grow. And you, you, you as a leader can hold your company back substantially. Yeah. Does your ego ever get in the way? No. I mean, has it it, ever? No, of of course I'm sure it has, (laughs) you know, but we, we all have them. But at the end of the day, if you really, my ego is built around how successful our brands are. And so if they, if I really want them to be successful, I need to have the right team around me. And what we did was really focus on, who's on our team. We talked about it endlessly about the talent level that we were looking for. And, and really that's, that's what I think really uh, up the ante. When you think about, um, all the brands that front burners created over the years, um, and, uh, nobody knows who Randy and Jack is. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I just, I didn't mean knows. that as like, no, a, I, 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 <laughs> I think it's actually, um, our personalities, yeah. you know? So, and we always put the brands, uh, first, you know, and we wouldn't try to, uh, as we did them, we wouldn't. Um, we really had a, a a really great process of how to separate the brands because you wouldn't want to dilute a brand like Velvet Taco with what you were doing at um, Twin Peaks, or you wouldn't want to dilute a Sixty Vines with what you're doing at Whiskey Cake. And so we we really, as entrepreneurs, had to really figure out a, a creative solution on 
how we really create these brands and keep them so on track and so focused um, because if you have people crossing over brands, it just creates bad dilution. So actually running a portfolio company is what we had to learn how to do. We have to interrupt today's video to let you know that right now, Restaurant Systems Pro is offering a no strings attached 60 day trial that will help you improve your systems, increase your profit and find better work life balance. All you have to do is click the link below. One thing, we, one thing that I want to talk about is to really kind of paint the picture of what your organizational like, 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 like what are the, the you, you mentioned earlier, it's a society, you have all these different concepts so within all those different concepts, you have all these, these titles, these roles, like, what does it look like? What are like, break that down, paint that picture of what your org chart looks like. So, um, it's actually as a portfolio company, we have um, funding of some uh, brands versus others. So with, they're all kind of in um, like their own holding companies. So the, the overall holding company is, you know, FB Society. Um, but within with underneath that, you have, you know, say a leader who would run a group of restaurants and then that person would have theirs. And then what what's really shared is a lot of accounting, finance, and resources, you know, so all those resources that are shared across the platform of, of a, you know, a multi portfolio company. So accounting finance, when you say resources, what do you mean? So, so if you have really smart people in beverage on one brand, they could help somebody on another brand, you know, so you just have tons of resources. If you have somebody who needs a job coach, you got job coaches internally, you know, yeah. you've got, you've got like years and years and years of talent that are all within the company who could help other brands and support them and, uh, it's a very collaborative, um, you know, kind of culture. So under one concept, what are the different titles you might see under every one of your concepts? What are the, the common co titles? So it, as they scale, they get, you know, more executive leadership. But the yeah. ones that have grown out probably the most, you would see a C CEO. Yeah. Um, you'd probably see a, a VP of ops. And then, uh, you know, we, we have a shared uh, CMO right now between all the brands, but they would have dedicated probably – VP of marketing, so and then dedicated uh, training at every brand. Okay, so those are the the you know the the leadership roles for each brand. Um, obviously, you have general managers and assistant managers, and all the way down, all the way down, all the stuff that we hear about often. Um, and then what you're sharing basically is accounting uh, and finance. Um, see your CFO and the accountants, and then I think this is really interesting. You said resources, and this is something that I've seen in different. Uh, markets where the way that I kind of describe it as polyamorous business partners, but they're not really sleeping together, just going to business together, where like you might have uh, a, an executive chef at this restaurant who came up and was known as like the food guy. And then over here at this bar, there's this, this craft cocktail person that comes up and they, they, they build their success on that skill. And then they, they like, well, if we were to partner up, like we could bring the best of both worlds. And then you see all these different business partners who were became successful because of their, their personal unique selling proposition, the thing that made them talented or whatever. And they realize that we can go further together and all have equity in these businesses. If we just start using each other's skills and leaning on each other's skills and weaknesses and just like being a better collective than we could ever be on our own. And it sounds like that's kind of what you're doing internally. Yeah. And, but you, we kind of, when you think about like, um, uh, young businesses in Dallas, that's how a lot of them start. Right. So, um, you know, we just have some of those resources internally. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it, it is like kind of the, the chef who meets a really good, um, you know, um, you know, bar guy who meets a really good, you know, smart business guy who can be the GM of the restaurant. And that's how they start a brand that that is kind of like as an entrepreneurial restaurant startup is very much what's happening in the market today. Yeah, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is you don't need to have an executive chef forever or, like a, or a director of culinary forever for every restaurant. You're going to have that that creative talent who is because that's your biggest expense so why have that title when you can just have one person is your job is to create the dishes and then you have somebody in the training department who helps that that team who executes your dish you know like that creative element doesn't need to be in every restaurant no and, and i think um, you can save a lot by just keeping people in their lane and, and sorry go yeah ahead. no you're you're right a hundred percent and a lot of the people who have been those creative forces in our company have gone on to do other things 
and a lot of them still come back as consultants and help us. So yeah. it's it's kind of like what you're talk, talking about earlier where people can leave the nest, but they can also come back, you know, yeah. and find a way that they don't have to be employees of ours, but they can, you know, you know, be paid for a function or something to help. Yeah, and I think as chefs get savvy and they learn more about business, they're going to recognize their value as intellectual pe- people or creators of intellectual inte- like intelligence property. Like, hey, like I bring something more than a paycheck. Like I'm creative and creative is the, the real hard thing to recreate. So if you are a creative, talented person, you can go so much further by just kind of being a hired gun on the creative front. And then you, you create something and then you help put the systems in place to execute that thing. So it's kind of a um, y- yes and no. Okay. Um, it, it can be valuable, but it also could be um, a little like unfulfilling. Um, you know, if, if you're really a person that believes in what you're doing and you, you share this idea with a company and they don't execute it right and you have no control over it, it's actually very unfulfilling. And so see that. Um, as opposed to being part of a team that you actually make contributions and you're proud of. And because I'm going to tell you, all those chefs that are consultants, they're not telling their friends and family to go eat in that restaurant that they just did because they know that it's not going to get executed to the way they want it yeah. to do. So, yeah. so actually being part of a team that really actually does what they say and say what they do and actually you bring something to life that you're proud of and you want to send your friends and family there is what what tends to be more attractive to some of those people got it got it so um where do we leave us so we we kind of went through uh each individual concept and the roles that are there but what what about here like at hq like what are the titles that are here like i walk by all those offices there's cubicles everywhere this is a huge operation you got going on like what's happening here so, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, you know, the, the, the support work, you know, this is really a support office. So we, we support all the restaurants out in the field. So um, for them to really keep, keep their eye on the ball and to do an excellent job, we got to trust that we can really execute, you know, the P&Ls right, all the accounting right, all the execution of that. And so that's, that's a lot of what we do here at the support office. 